Hi guys, thanks again for visiting us at RS Aquaculture. So for the past few years, you know, when we work with our clients to start a new farm, we get a lot of questions like, you know, how do we actually start our farm and what do we actually need before choosing a particular location. And for most of the farms, whether is it outdoor or indoor, the concept is actually quite similar, right? So if you can see, you know, what are the requirements for an outdoor farm versus an indoor shrimp farm. So in this video, I'll be going through how do you start and what do you need before you decide on a particular location before starting your journey in aquaculture. So stay tuned. <laughs> So welcome back guys. For your information, aquaculture is expected to grow 10% on year-on-year -year basis and we expect the aquaculture industry to grow very significantly throughout these next few years. So if you'd like to get more information on aquaculture, do subscribe to our channel so that you'll get all our latest videos and information about aquaculture. So back to our topic for the day. It doesn't matter whether you're farming shrimps or crabs or even fish, one of the key variables that you're going to need is power because power is commonly used to run your filtration system and also to provide aeration. The amount of power consumption will depend next on the species that you're farming and the method that you're farming. It either is it using biofloc technology or even filtration systems such as RAS. Generally speaking, the RAS system will require more power in the pumps and the biofloc system will require more power in the form of aeration systems such as this root blower. So what you see over here is actually some of the pumps that we have been using in our crab system for about five years now. And these pumps actually run on a three-phase power. So one important consideration between looking for the correct power is that in terms of quantity and the type of power, whether it's a single phase or three-phase power. So as you can see for our mud crab farming system here, we're actually using all three-phase power. And this is actually also true for most of our farms out there, uh, whether it's shrimps. We prefer to use tree phase because we are actually using a lot of power for our filtration system. The only exceptions that we've been using single phase power is for aquaponic systems. As you can see here, the aquaponic system only runs a small aeration pump and also a small pump to circulate the water flow. Uh, but because the densities are different in the aquaponic system and versus our rust systems and our biofox system, therefore in this case we're actually only using single phase horsepower. So before settling down onto a location, the first and foremost thing is to check your availability of the power. And for us in Malaysia, we actually check that with TMB to see what are the available options, whether it's a three phase or single phase and you know what sort of tariff will you be having to pay. On a monthly basis. So the next important variable to look at is security. Security is important because if you are actually running a very high intensity shrimp farm or fish farm, you need to make sure that people are not easily accessible to your farm. This is to minimize crop theft to ensure that outsiders are not able to steal your crop. And also this is also to ensure that diseases do not easily spread into your farm, which is actually quite crucial when you're running a high intensity shrimp farm. So apart from the species that you'll be cultivating, it is also very likely that your RAS system also has a lot of high-tech equipment such as sensors, uh, blower or aerator systems, which actually be quite expensive if they are tempered or stolen away. CCTV is actually extremely good to monitor the security of your farm and also employing you know, dogs to make sure that your farm is actually secure and safe from strangers. And my last consideration will actually be only the quality of water. If you're running a traditional farm, I would actually advise you to place this at the foremost importance. But if you're running a RAS system with recycling technology, I would think that this would not be the most important thing. So for a lot of people, some, some of them actually use well water as their water source. And, but for us, we actually use a lot of tap water, which is actually municipal water. Uh, we prefer to use municipal water because it is actually more controlled compared to the well water. Well water is quite dependent on agriculture effluent. So for our case, we have actually used most of the time tap water. But our business is actually different because with our filtration system, we do not require daily or even monthly water change. So this actually reduces a lot of our water costs. And therefore, water quality for us is more of a 
one-time initial costing after you've adjusted all of the key parameters such as salinity, right? It sort of stays the same and stabilized because you have filtration systems to pull out the waste, which is a bit different from how traditional aquaculture system actually works. Right, so you can see over here, uh, even our shrimps and crabs actually being cultured, cultivated in the same tanks in our RAS systems. And this is really the difference between a RAS system and a traditional farm because with all that power, you're able to sort of remove the waste in the system and continuously recycle. And we have done this for both uh, in our, all of our farms, including aquaponic systems and bioflock systems and even recirculating systems. So guys, we hope you enjoyed this video and we hope you have a better idea on what is it that you require before you start a farm and to pick the correct location with ideal power source and it is also secure or you're able to secure it using different methods and lastly you know look at the water source that is available to you whether is it well water whether is it municipal water or even sea water and that will also time what sort of filtration system you will have to use at the end so thank you and if you like our content do subscribe again to Rasa Culture.